Hi fishy folks and happy Fry Fry Friday. Today is actually Thursday. Uh, I took a mental health day and also a, a dentist appointment day. So uh, I have a day off basically. Um, I have plans in the fish room. We'll see what gets done. But the first things first, I have that leaking 20 gallon tank that I need to drill and replace. So I figured I'd take you along for the ride. Grab a snack, a beverage. It's possibly going to be a long one. There probably will be lots of bloopers and, uh, you know, just general screw ups by yours truly. And, uh, yeah, let's get ready. All right, Fishy folks, we're back behind the scenes, and here's the first issue. So, when I set up the fish room, uh, I bought a couple different styles of bulkheads. I bought this style, which is slip slip. So, this piece slips in and out of the bulkhead and then it's slip on the other side. And then I bought this style, which is slip and threaded. I didn't know what I was gonna like better. I didn't know what I was gonna want more of. I was just starting out. I probably bought 10 and 10 or what have you. So here's the deal. With this threaded kind, if I wanted to remove this bulkhead, I would just uh, uh, unthread this, take this off, and the bulkhead slides out. But this is glued in. So I can't get this bulkhead out unless I break the glass. And even if I break the glass, I probably won't be able to get, I definitely won't be able to get the nut off. Besides, it looks like I I burred up the threads when I tightened it. So essentially this is garbage now. Whereas if I had this kind, I could redo it. Uh, the other kind I have, which I've been using because uh, they're cheaper, is this kind. Basically I just make my own, I use the bulkhead and then I make my own adapter at a PVC. Um, this one, Looks like, you know, I use this threaded barb here, which probably cost about a buck or so, which is a little expensive when you're doing a lot of different tanks. Um, there's probably others here like that where I didn't use a barb. I just used different size PVC, which I, I have a ton of. And look, there's one, the second one over there where it's all kinds of messed up. I don't, I don't know what I did over there, but here's the one where I didn't use, use the uh, barb. I just did it myself. All right, well, this tank is drained. I'm gonna get this out, set the camera up, and uh, show you how I drill tanks. Stand by. All right, fishy folks, I have the camera set up so you can see what I'm working on as opposed to my beautiful face. If uh, you're gonna miss my face, just take a look at this picture. There, now you have my face in your head and everything should be better, but. So here's how I drill tanks. There are many ways to drill tanks. There are many videos online to drill tanks. I remember one in particular, I watched Greg Jones drill a tank and I love Greg, he's a great guy, but it took him like half an hour to drill a tank. Uh, it takes me like a minute, so uh, yeah. All right, so I use usually a template, which is this piece of wood, it helps uh, keep the drill straight. Also, I used to drill all my tanks with the hole close to the top. You gotta leave two or three inches from the top or else the glass gets weak and you have a much better chance of, of cracking it. Um, but then I learned if you put them lower, you can do a very fast water change. You just basically take the standpipe out from the bulkhead, put the, um, the screen in and boom, you do half a 50% a water change, easy. Now, uh, that's probably when I'm just gonna move it down a little bit like this, just kind of judge. I like you know, when you see a, a fish room and every tank is perfectly the same, I like that. I'm just too lazy to do it. Let's talk a little bit about the drill bit. This is actually an old uh, glass hole saw. Uh, you can buy them many places. Gemco has, I think, two or three different versions. I got this one on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. If you're just doing a couple tanks, three, four, maybe eight, ten tanks, you a cheap one will do you. But uh, like Dan's Fish bought the best one, I think, and a sharpener from uh, from uh, Gemco. And he did like a thousand tanks or something. I don't know how many he did, but he did a lot. The other thing is you need water to help keep it cool. And also uh, the water will help clean out some of the glass dust. So I pour a little bit of water in there and then I start my hole. Probably fast music now. One thing I forgot, very important. When the glass disc falls down, it could chip the other side of the tank. So you have to put something underneath it to catch it. Just a towel or uh, a towel or a towel will probably work for you. So make sure you have a towel when you do that. Here we go. Fish 
fishy folks that's that it took a little bit more than a minute that's because the uh, bits probably uh, a little dull so maybe saying to yourself why do you have water what's the water do keeping it cool I don't understand well uh, keeping it cool will help the bit last longer also the water will help uh, clear out some of the glass dust and uh, overall it's just what you should do that's just because I guess anyway uh, now you gotta wipe all the glass dust off clean out the inside and I'll show you how I install the bulkhead all right so stand by all right fishy folks I just want to show you what happens here so here's the hole you can see it chipped a little bit on the inside and that's because my bit is pretty dull so I don't think I have a new one, so I'm only going to drill this tank today, set it up. It's already plumbed and stuff because it's replacing uh, that empty tank right next to my first and second place metals. The other thing on the docket today is to hang that fan from the ceiling, so I got to figure out what the best way to do that is. And I may fix that, that really bad airline that's sagging because uh, I'm lazy. So we'll see. All right, stand by. All right, fishy folk, here are the parts of the bulkhead. I'll show you, I'll take it apart. So the way a bulkhead works is you have essentially three main parts of the bulkhead. This is the part that goes in the tank, the big threaded part. There's a rubber O-ring that also goes in the tank. That's Indy, by the way, say hi, Indy. He's an old man, uh, just like me. Anyway, so this goes in the tank. Like so, this nut goes on the outside and you tighten it uh, to approximately the good torque spec good and tight. If you know what that is, it's pretty funny. Really, you just want to hand tight, tighten it. Then you have the uh, elbow. There's many different kinds. This one's threaded. I always put some um, Teflon tape. This one's been taped for a while. The tape's in there, but that's fine. Now. I did make a mistake. I shouldn't have tightened that down just yet because I don't know where this is going to end up. The bottom of the tank is over here. Obviously, I want this elbow facing down. Maybe we go one more. Oh, perfect. I probably can go at least another half, but... And that's it. Then you put a drain on it, and you're good. I'm going to take that old tank out, put this one in, get the water set up, and uh, go from there. So, stand by again. All right, fishy folks, I have it all ready to go. I just wanna show you the parts of the standpipe or what goes in the tank, right? So, so here's a little piece of uh, half inch, no, sorry, three quarter um, PVC. That goes in a three quarter elbow and there's a little bit sticking out. This is what goes in the bulkhead. This is the actual standpipe part. This is what, how you can adjust your water level if you want to. Then I have another um, adapter here so I can fit my screen. Now, we've talked about screens before. You can put those foam sponges on here. I like to wrap mine in pinky floss. It's cheap and effective. So that's what I'll probably do. I'll probably put some pinky floss on here, use a wire tie, boom, be done. All right, guys? Uh, I'll show you the finished product in a minute, and then the fan. All right, fishy folks, I have my pinky floss. There's a coarse side and a fine side. You put the coarse side out. I use just enough to cover it. I don't want to waste any. Then I take a handy dandy zip tie or wire tie, depending on if you're from the east or the west. I, I just made that up, I have no idea. I call it a wire tie, some people call it zip ties. They call it zip ties because if you listen, it sounds like a zipper. Now, you could use two, but I'm cheap, so I only use one. Done. Then I usually, not always, but I usually take a, a scissors and Cut the tail off just to make it look neater. Boom, finished. Finale. That's all, folks. <laughs> now, let me show you in the tank. All right, fish folks, I'm gonna hold this so uh, hopefully it won't be too shaky. So you see how the hole is down low? And then you put this in. Gotta make sure it's in all the way. Now, if you look, most of that is standing out of the water, right? If you look, there's the water standing too high. But it's adjustable, right? You just go boop, and then you can put it at whatever level you want. I'm gonna probably keep mine somewhere not like that. Um, probably I'm just gonna switch hands and put it 
something like that. And this way, as water overflows, water pours in from the auto water change just so much as right here. Uh, you know, it can fill up a little bit and overflow. The other thing to note with an auto water change system, or if you have any dripping, right? If you have anything hanging in the water, when the water stops, it may create a vacuum or a backflow situation, and you could drain a tank. And I've done that before, of course. So uh, it doesn't really drain a tank, it just drains it as low as this goes. But basically you're taking water from one tank, putting it in another, which is the whole reason why I have this system, so I don't do that. Anyway, being it's Fry Fry Friday, let's take a look at some of the Hawaiian snake skin fry. See those guys growing up in there. And uh, we have some mutt fry over here, of course. And let's see if we can see some of the Medusa fry. Yeah, there's one. See right in the middle through the dirty glass. Now it's by this filter, there we go. And do we have any dark purple mosaic fry we can see? To be honest, I don't remember if I saw fry in here or not, but all right, that's enough looking at tanks. I don't see any fry. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's fry here, the Jarwee Lazulis. Uh, still growing slow. In fact, I owe somebody a video. So when I'm done with this, I will take a video for him. Uh, all right, that's it for Fry Fry Friday. Fry video. I'm gonna finish filling this tank up at least a little bit more. Get the, uh, get, that's the filter from this tank. Put that filter in there. Uh, I have some java moss and weeds down there. And then I can put guppies in there. All right, guys, that's it for now. Uh, stand by, I'll be back. All right, fishy folks, I rigged up the fan. Not sure I'm gonna leave it 100% like this, but it is working pretty well. It might be too close to the heater. Um, so all I did was I, I took the the pole apart. It comes in two pieces. There was a little lip on top of that uh, pole. I just took a hammer and bent it a little bit more. Took two three-quarter inch pipe brackets, screwed them up there. Uh, then I screwed, and I'll show you when this thing turns. Then I screwed uh, the plastic base to the pipe because it's just a friction fit. I didn't want it to fall. Then I just hung the cord through the, uh, the eyelet, which I hang my auto water change fill lines from. So it is pretty hot here, right above the heater. So I may have to move it up. I'm gonna see how it goes for, uh, for a day. Uh, the temperature in here now, hi Chewy you and your cock right now we're at 83.3 here's the uh carbon monoxide detector which fell down there before as i want to show it to you uh we're gonna let it we're gonna let this work for now see how it goes and uh we'll check it tomorrow or later on today and if it's really off or that thing melts i'm definitely gonna have to move it up a little bit or or forward maybe i don't know it's only in the way of uh like two tanks over there that that tank in the corner with Bruce in it and um, maybe the uh, platinum red dragon tank also I, I could probably turn it off and work around it but the other thing to note is a couple of people have been talking about my fancy dandy uh, thermal probe here and they're like I'm like oh yeah you know the temperature is 92 degrees this is warm water that I put in here from my spigot so I'm going to let it, you know, obviously get to temperature. But but really what they tell you to do is go on top in the water. So it's 93 there, here, 93 also. So let's look at this one. They say you shouldn't go through the glass. 82 through the glass. 80 on top of the glass. 82, let's look, hold on. Let me shoot this. 81.43, whatever. And then if I go on the top, 80. So, well, maybe not 80. 79, 78, a little more than a degree off. Let's check another tank. Let's check this 10 gallon with the super reds. So we just shoot the glass, 81.8. We shoot the water. 80 point 
one. So almost two degrees difference, which is what a couple people said you would get. So fry, fry, fry. There's some rainbow dragon mosaic fry. This is the tank with my super red bristle nose breeding pair, which of course I don't see. And they didn't really eat a whole lot this morning. So I'm going to have to check in there and see what's going on. Here are the variatus platies I got. I'm gonna breed these and sell them on the website. All right, fishy folks. A lot got done in the fish room. Not enough, but a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed it. There's my fan. Check out michaelsfishroom.com. And on Sunday, Scott from King and Queen Cichlids and I will be filming our famous question and answer session over uh, breakfast and then we're going to do a fish room tour out in PA somewhere so I'm going to leave you with Chewy's cock because that's how I roll all right fishy folks I have it set so you can see what I'm doing as opposed to my fancy fancy all right fishy folks I have the camera set so you can actually see what I'm working on as opposed to my beautiful face I know You'll just have to, you know, take a look at this picture to, uh, to, to epic. All right, fishy folks, I have the cam camera set. Really? What a dummy. What is that? Oh, wait. wait. Uh, you got to leave two or three inches from the top uh, or else the gra glass, or else the grass gets greener. Those foam... Um, yeah, nothing. <laughs>